Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. The case that I'm going to be looking into today is the case of, well it's a child abuse case and a child death case so please if it is not for you, I know a lot of people get affected by more of, more children cases than adult cases because they are so innocent. I mean everyone's innocent but children, they just haven't even had a chance to live their lives yet so pe some people just can't handle it. I'm just putting my warning in now, if this isn't a case for you, please go find a different video, you know, if you want to watch a different one of mine, I've got plenty. So yeah, just to warn you that that is what this case is about, and it is the case of Daniel Pelker. This case was suggested by Natasha, so thank you for that, I appreciate any suggestions you guys have, and of course if you do have any more, please do let me know. Daniel Pelker was born on the 15th of July in 2007 in Coventry, England to parents Magdalena Luxak and Eric Pelker. Now, his family was originally from Poland, but Eric's father brought his family over to the UK, which included Magdalena, who was obviously his son's girlfriend at the time. That was in 2005 and they had their child together, which was Daniel, and he was born in Coventry in 2007. They stayed together until 2008, but then they ended up sort of separating. They both kind of went their separate ways, and then in 2010, Magdalena met a new boyfriend who was called Marius Krelazek. And I apologise, I'm going to say it now. I'm sorry if I say any of these names wrong. They are Polish names. I am not good at pronunciation, as you probably already know. So I'm just going to say it right now that if I get them wrong, my apologies. But I mean, it's literally, literally come to be expected of me at this point. Let's face it. In 2010 was when sort of things began to be being seen. This is when she had moved in with Marius who was obviously then Daniel's stepfather, and a health visitor noticed this bruise on the side of Daniel's head. They were told that, you know, he had just fallen over and that is how he had gotten the bruise. The following January, he was taken to A&E, so now we're in 2011, he was taken to A&E with a broken arm and apparently had multiple bruises as well. These were assessed and looked into and a doctor had admitted that this could have been caused by an accident also. And so in the September, four-year-old Daniel begins school. Now he didn't really know very much English at all. I don't I don't know if he knew any English really. Again, with his parents being Polish and his stepdad, they might have just spoken a lot of families just speak their language, their native language in the household, even though they don't live in that country anymore. Maybe that is what they did with Daniel. I'm not entirely sure on that, but I don't think like he knew any English. He was also a very, very shy boy and very reserved. So he didn't really speak much English. He kept himself to himself. But it was said that he was a very bright child. Apparently Magdalena had said to a co-worker that he had autism and that he wasn't even worth being beat because he didn't feel it or something like that. And then there was a lot of text sent between the pair, a lot of incriminating texts when they sort of, when the police found out about all this and they looked into it all, you know, they had found all these texts that they'd been sending to each other. One of those texts included this was in October of 2011. Lead him to the room and lock him there. You'll have some peace and do wait for me. And let me show you some of the other stages. That was sent in the morning. About an hour later, they got another one that says, we'll deal with Rudy, which was Daniel's nickname, after school. He won't see grub at all. So they were abusing him. They were withholding food from him. He wasn't allowed to eat very much and so he began becoming very focused on food because he was hungry. He was a little boy and he was so hungry because his parents were always stopping him from eating and so when he went to school he was getting skinnier but the kids there had lunch boxes and dinners and he didn't and so he would begin stealing food and they began to get 
worried like he was seen by a school nursing support house officer and Magdalena just told them basically that he had speech delays, that he had language delays, that he was aggressive towards her and that he had an excessive appetite and that is why he was hungry all the time. Now Daniel also had a sister and his sister would try and look out for him the best that she could but again she was only young at the time. She tried so hard and it's just so sad when you look into it all. Like he, Daniel would be punished by being locked in this tiny little box room uh, and it basically, basically just had like a mattress in there. Often he wouldn't be allowed to go to the toilet so this mattress was stained with urine and feces and whatnot because he would be forced to do it on that and she would often try and let him out and put her, put her little brother in her room and get him out of that horrible tiny little room that he was always forced to be in and then they decided that you know that wasn't acceptable he wasn't allowed out if they didn't allow him out and so they removed the handle from the door so she could no longer do that like literally and now we're into november so you know he'd been going to school for a couple of months at this point and the school begin to worry again because daniel they have like a free fruit sort of thing where you take one piece of fruit and obviously to promote healthy eating in school and things like that and he was taking four to five pieces of it like he was eating a lot of the fruit so they're wondering what you know why what's going on and again she just basically said that he would raid the fridge and he would punch his stepfather and his mother when he wasn't allowed to eat all the food a social worker apparently recommended that daniel would be given should be given a snack on his way to school not only that he as time progressed he would become skinnier he would get more hungrier, he would try and steal food from school wherever he could, so he would actually steal from other children's lunchboxes to the point where the school had to lock them up and I don't know whether they believed this about him having excessive appetite and being aggressive and stuff like that, whether that's why they thought he wanted to eat all the time, I honestly don't know, I really don't know, but this boy was veiled by so many people on so many levels just it's just so horrific like he's literally in school stealing food and nobody did anything about it and it honestly broke my heart at one point i believe the school were making pancakes on shrove tuesday if any of you know in the uk it's pancake day basically and they brought in all the stuff they're making all these pancakes and i believe one ended up in the bin or something or some excess ended in the bin and it was in the bin dirty and gross and daniel picks out of the bin and starts eating it it was recommended to his parents that he'd go and see sort of a paediatrician. They had seen all these bruises on him, all these marks and things like that. So Magdalena arranged this, but then would delay it like a few times. If his parents found out that Daniel had been stealing food from school, because again, they were starving him to death, essentially. So him stealing food from school was not what they had planned and they didn't want him to do that. He would get punished by them pouring salt into his mouth. The initial appointment for the doctor was made for the 29th of November and then it was rescheduled. By December, Daniel was pretty much barely in school at that point. His attendance rate was below 64% and an education officer decides to visit the family. On the 19th of December, Magdalena cancels his doctor's appointment once more and that was rescheduled to the 10th of February 2012. And with regards to, you know, the school and being seen in the public, it was noticed that he was having all these bruises all over the place. He had various injuries to his head and neck. This was noted on five separate occasions by three different adults and not one of those instances were reported to social services. By the start of 2012, concerns were being raised that Daniel was obsessed with food and he was literally eating out of bins. I have read that on one occasion, his birthday, his teacher brought in like a big birthday cake for her birthday to share with her class. It was intended for the whole class and Daniel hit eight, like half of it. And then you've got to think that the kids go on the school holidays, so off they go. And when he comes back, he is showing visible signs of being a hell of a lot thinner than when he was, than before he went on the holidays. One teacher saw fingerprint bruising around Daniel's neck and staff also noticed multiple facial bruises. Then let me just show you a few of the texts that the pair share again. This was after they were advised to see the family doctor. One of them, the text messages states that I'm going to tell Daniel's sister to watch what you are saying in case the lady asks. Uh, 
Another text message states that literally from the abuse, Daniel's hand turned blue and Magdalena says, what am I supposed to do now? Because his hand is blue. Like it's not something that you can hide. So she probably just kept him off school, let's face it. This was at the beginning of February and what this text really, really disturbed me because it read, it was sent at 10.21 a.m. that same day and it read that, well now he's tempor temporarily unconscious because I nearly drowned him. She then states, I won't be hitting him, but if I hear him when he wakes up later, he's going to go back in the bathtub, which is just, honestly, I just can't, I just don't know. I just, I honestly have no idea how anyone could do that to anyone, let alone their own child. Then on the 10th of February in 2012, he was finally seen by the doctor. He had lost a lot of weight at that point. He weighed 30 pounds. He said that he looked thin, but not like excessively thin, I guess. Magdalena tells the doctor that he's smears feces at home, that he's really, you know, not well behaved, that he's always hungry, even though they feed him loads, you know, just more and more lies basically. And the doctor fears, the doctor does tests on him and they get his bloods back and they realize that he has a high sodium level, which is salt level. And so they put him on tablets for that. They believe that basically he may have worms. And so they put him on medication for that. They said that he appeared thin, but not wasting away. That's what, that's what he actually used. He went away on some more holidays, like sort of term holidays. And then when he came back, he was visibly thinner. It was said that he was very pasty, his eyes were like sunken, and he was no longer really interacting with other children at all. The school couldn't really communicate very well with him because he didn't know very much English. So I believe they brought in somebody from a different school who could speak Polish probably. And they tried to speak to Daniel, but I don't believe they got much in the way of a response at that point. People continued to notice that Daniel was eating out of bins, that he was, I don't know, just, he was just fading. Like, he was so thin and just, his teacher said that he just looked so sad and so lonely and it was just, it's just awful to even think that a four-year-old boy went through something like that. On the 1st of March, he would receive his final beating that actually caused his death. There is CCTV footage of Magdalena picking up her children from school. She grabs her daughter's hand, I believe it's her daughter anyway, and little Daniel, who's four years old, bearing in mind, is seen sort of hurrying along after her. And that is, you know, she didn't even grab his hand or anything. She just, she just walks out with her and he's left to just follow the best he can. Now, it was said that the reason that Daniel got his severe beating was that he had actually wet himself. That was on that day. Um, his sister hears all this screaming, she runs upstairs and Daniel is being dunked into a, like, a really cold bath and he's screaming. He was being held underwater at that point. He then apparently bashed his head on the side of the bath, or his head was bashed on the side of the bath. The pair ran downstairs and his sister was the, literally the one that pulled him out of the bath and she was kissing him on the head and things like that. I believe later on, you know, his parents, if you can even call them that at this point, dumped him in the bedroom on the stained mattress with the door that has no handle and just left him there. Then apparently on the 2nd of March, they both go in to check on Daniel and find that he was unresponsive. Apparently there were some Google searches done that were care patient in a coma as well as salt poisoning that was on the, the second and they i believe there was also search that is was child sleeping and not responding and then they just go out to visit a friend and just leave him there don't seek any medical help for him or anything like that then there was another series of texts that came through this one was at 4 34 pm it said that he'll get over it by tomorrow there's no point in stressing ourselves out and call an ambulance because that will cause proper problems. That is what they were texting each other, which is just beyond horrific. They figured that he would get through it and he would be fine and, you know, they wouldn't get in trouble. They go in a little later on, check on Daniel again, and that is when they discover that he is no longer breathing. They then take his body from that horrible little tie box room with the disgusting mattress that he was on. They put him on his sister's mattress and they tell his sister not to tell anyone about the bath incident, about Daniel smashing his head off it, 
nothing. She wasn't allowed to say anything. Then at 3.07 on the on the 3rd of March, Magdalena finally decides to come make a 999 call in which she is crying down the phone, stating that her son is no longer breathing. My son, my son, he, he stopped breathing. He got four years, yeah? And I, and we wake up and he stopped, he stopped, he stopped breathing. He sent me... Okay, what's he, do, what's he doing now? Is he breathing? <laughs> no, he's not breathing. Okay. Nothing. All right, are you, are you right by him at the moment? <laughs> Please. Paramedics arrived, they took him to the hospital and he was pronounced as deceased at 3.50. They obviously tried to do everything that they could, but he was blue. He was called to the torch. They just they just couldn't do anything at that point. His body had given up and he had been starved and beaten and abused for so long now. It just, it couldn't take it anymore. And he passed away. He was four years old. The pair leave the hospital and they go straight home and they try and get rid of the mattress and try and hide all the evidence that they basically tortured this child to death. They try to mask the horrible stench that's coming out of that room. You know, they just tried to cover it up. On the 5th of March, a child protection service person went to the hospital to see Daniel's body and they were mortified by what they saw. He weighed 23 pounds. He was so skinny, so malnutritioned and was basically described to look like a concentration camp victim or a seriously ill cancer patient. That's how bad he was. When the autopsy was done, it revealed that he had 22 different injuries, 10 of which were to his head alone. This diagram that I'm showing now was sort of created of his injuries and was widely distributed throughout the media. He was emaciated, severely underweight, and his cause of death was ruled as a brain injury. After the investigation, Daniel's body was returned to his father, Eric, and initially he couldn't afford the cost of flying Daniel's body back over to Poland from the UK where they were. And then a Polish funeral firm in London actually donated this money for the cause and Eric was able to take Daniel back home to Poland. And that is where on the 3rd of September in 2013, he was finally laid to rest. The pair were arrested. They basically denied, denied it all as, as they do. And during trial, Magdalena would claim that, you know, he forced her. He said that if she tried to protect Daniel or something like that, that he would strangle her, you know, that she, he was the one who wouldn't let her feed him. His sister basically gave the evidence that she had seen about him in the bath and about him locked in that tiny room, that he wasn't allowed to use the toilet. And obviously they had the te text message evidence, which again, just detailed between them both what they did she couldn't really deny it at that point because she was equally as evil they would force feed him salt as punishment they would make him do squats as punishment and obviously would beat him things like that what they did was to daniel was truly horrific and it just seemed like he was invisible to socials and those people around him that could have helped him that just didn't in August of 2013, Magdalena and Marius were sentenced to serve a minimum of 30 years in prison for the murder of Daniel Pelka. And Daniel's case is very famous, you know, a lot of people, like all the other child abuse cases, like Victoria Columbia, like Baby P, these are children that were failed by our system, that were known by the system, and just, they ended up dying and being abused to death anyway and it's just it's just one more of the heartbreaking cases that was just really well known to the socials and nothing was done about it and it's honestly so sad daniel never had the chance to live his life and it was cruelly stolen from him and i i don't understand why because when the police raided them they found that the cupboards were full of food they had tons of food they just weren't giving it him you know they fed the sister they just didn't feed him. I don't know what they felt like they had against him, but he was the only one that was victimized. It's not like they, you know, did this to the sister as well. It was just him. I don't, I don't understand why, but it was. And it's just so sad because he just never got a chance. He never stood a chance. And his poor father that was left without, his son was taken by the mother, like they normally do. The mother normally gets like custody of the child. She took him, lived with him, ended up getting with another guy and they both murdered him. It's just awful. 
he probably would be thinking, you know, if I would have just taken him, if I would have just got him, he'd still be here. It's just so sad, honestly. On the 14th of July 2015, I've read that Magdalena was found unresponsive in her cell and she was pronounced as deceased. She had taken her life the day before what would have been Daniel's eighth birthday. Then on the 27th of January in 2016, Marius was found in his cell deceased. He had actually died of a heart attack. He had refused treatment because he was scared that people might recognize him. So both of those people who did this horrific crime to that poor little boy are no longer here. <sighs> yeah, it just brings an end to the case, I guess. But it's just, these cases are so heavy hitting and so hard to do and I, you know, I apologize. And that is why I don't like to do them too often because they are just so, they're really, really hard to look into and to discover everything that happened to him. And then to even do the video on it, to rehash it all again once you've already researched it, it's just really, really hard. So yeah, I don't do these too often. If you do suggest how child abuse cases, you know, I will eventually do them, just not all at once. So I'm sorry for that, but I just, I can't take it, so yeah. But yeah, that is the end of the case. If you guys have enjoyed this video, give me a big thumbs up, subscribe to the channel for similar content. Anyway, that's all I have today on the case of Daniel Pelko. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, bye.